I've set it up again a little differently. I mean, it's the same setup, but I've put my aluminum foil pieces, if you notice, they're both on one side, and there's, they're next to each other, above each other. One's on top of the other. And what you're going to see next is a little bit of a zoom in here, and I'm going to put the camera on a tripod so it stays very still. And that way, uh, it won't be my hand shaking that you think is moving things. But the streams will be running, and the whole system will be working. And you'll hear the spark down here. And when that sparks is when you'll you'll see some movement on my the electric or the inductors I've made over here. I'm using one of my regular inductors for this Lord Kelvin's to normally work. These are the special ones I've made to show this on how I believe uh, this is kind of a good way to show in very close proximity to how water witching works. But anyway, you'll see this, and there's another video where I don't have the black background back there, but I put this back there so you can see those two pieces of aluminum there. And like this angle here, I'll probably use so you can watch as the stream from the, the apparatus, the thunderstorm, goes past it and what happens. And we'll do that now. Okay, it's running. And the stream is on the far side over here behind them. You see my hand. But I want you to watch what the blades, especially the bottom one does. Uh, you'll hear the spark as the system. Discharges. And sometimes it takes a little bit for it to get going. Let's watch the bottom piece of aluminum. There's a spark. And every time you hear that snap, there went one. Watch the bottom piece of aluminum. And the top one even moves. If you notice, they both vibrate. And the water is not hitting them. And if the air from the water moving was causing them to move, they would move all the time. So if you notice, only when you hear that pop, right there, they move. And it's the release of the gravity, static charge, however you want to explain it. But my theory, it's gravity. Getting ready. Pop. If you watch the blades, especially the bottom one, you'll see movement every time you hear this spark. Get ready. Pop. You ready? Pop. I hope, I guess you can hear the spark. That's the release of the energy that the water's, uh, actually, the, the, the blades are taking the energy from the water. And you notice the stream kind of bends and frays out towards the bottom of your screen there. Here comes a pop, pop, and it straightens out. But watch the blades. If you have been watching the blades, they will vibrate and move. Pop every time it pops. And they don't move or vibrate unless that pop happens. But if you watch. And there, what one just happened a moment ago. The water spraying, pop. But just keep your eye on the blades. You can play this back and keep your eye, just keep your eye on the blades now that you know when to do it. They move. And the whole point of this, it's how water witching works. When water's flowing, or even a big body of water's under the ground, water flowing into that big body or out of that big body or just swirling around that big body is moving. It's acceleration. And this is what's causing your two... Uh, water witching rods to either align up or push away from each other. 
And usually since our static charge of our bodies, the gravity of our bodies and our feet on the ground, and if you get certain shoes on, you'll be insulated. If you wear certain shoes, you can water witch better than with other kinds of shoes. I've learned that. Just because of the c conduction of, there's another one, conduction of gravity through your body to the ground and the static charge that the, the water witching rods are you're charging your body with and how they work with each other. Another one. So I know you can hear the spark, and right when you hear the spark, you'll see the vibration of the, the little aluminum uh, little uh, plates I've put out there. Another one. And the water's getting low, so the vibration and, on the discharge won't be near as much. I'm out of water. So I hope you saw all that and you understand what I'm saying. Okay, I've flipped the video on its side now. So as you're looking at it, Imagine that the two blades sticking out are the two uh, water witching rods in your hand sticking straight forward away from you. Like you're that white plastic pipe. Those two blades are your hand sticking out and you're looking from above, I guess. And the water stream going by is, is like a pipe or uh, a little vein of water under the ground that you're, you're standing over. And you're walking up to it or you're standing over it or you're coming up to a big body of water under the ground and it's got movement whatever water the water witching works on there's a little bit of movement and gravity is moving through it that's why it works and this is what i'm showing you with this but my point is just as you watch this in this flipped uh, orientation just imagine that the two you know blades sticking out are the water witching uh, rods in your hands and the stream is the water under the ground just kind of imagine that if you will and as the water is underneath you it's going to pull those towards each other but that's because of the, the charge of your body the charge going down each of your arms to each rod and they're separated but they are major conductors as where your body isn't quite the conductor like that a clothes hanger or a piece of copper or whatever you might use for water witching so anyway the movement here is just slight but if you have a huge body of water and you're standing over as this I'm depicting here, they will pull towards each other and they may pull away from each other. I've seen water witchers where they go away from each other. And I can't remember the exact specifics of it. Uh, it may have been what type of water it was or how he, how, how, how he was doing it or something. But most times they cross each other. They come toward each other and get in alignment with the flow of water or the water underneath you. You'll see movement every time you hear this spark. Get ready. Pop. You ready? Pop. I hope, I guess you can hear the spark. That's the release of the energy that the water's, uh, actually, the, the, the blades are taking the energy from the water. And you notice the stream kind of bends and frays out towards the bottom of your screen there. Here comes a pop. Pop. And it straightens out. But watch the blades. If you have been watching the blades, they will vibrate and move. Pop every time it pops. And they don't move or vibrate unless that pop happens. If you watch. And there, one just happened a moment ago. The water spraying. Pop. But just keep your eye on the blades. You can play this back and keep your eye. Just keep your eye on the blades now that you know when to do it. They move. And the whole point of this, it's how water witching works. When water's flowing or even a big body of water is under the ground, water flowing into that big body or out of that big body or just swirling around that big body is moving. It's acceleration. And this is what's causing your two... Uh, water witching rods to either align up or push away from each other and usually since our static charge of our bodies the gravity of our bodies and our feet on the ground and if you get certain shoes on you'll be insulated if you wear certain shoes you can water witch better than with other kinds of shoes i've learned that just because of the c conduction of there's another one Conduction of gravity through your body to the ground and the static 
charge that the, the water witching rods are you're charging your body with and how they work with each other. Another one. So I know you can hear the spark and right when you hear the spark you'll see the vibration of the, the little aluminum uh, little uh, plates I've put out there. Another one. And the water's getting low so the vibration and on the discharge won't be near as much. I'm out of water. So I hope you saw all that and you understand what I'm saying. And that's it.